You're listening to a best of broadcast of the RH3 show. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3show.com. Guess what, y'all? I'm back. It is another great day here on the RH3 show. Yes, thank y'all so much for tuning in to another wonderful day, another Tuesday, Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Anchor.fm. That's y'all can listen to that anytime on my podcast. That's Anchor.fm, Google Play Music, Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, and Overcast. That's five syndication spots that I'm on. And also on my flagship station, if you choose to listen to me live, you can listen to me on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 6 to 7 p.m. W Pop Radio. And if you should miss it, go to my uh, syndication spots on the podcast or also listen to me on Saturdays. The Tuesdays broadcast will air from 2 to 3 p.m. And the Thursdays broadcast will air 7 to 8 p.m. on Saturdays. But we got a jam-packed show for you today, y'all. We got a... um, a real talk with red discussion. We are on the last leg of our biblical dating series. We're on part seven Thursday. We'll conclude it. Uh, today we're uh, going to be talking about from high to I do within a year. And we also got, uh, at, not the Ask Red Letter, but the Inside Scoop of Red. That's where I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on today's world and entertainment news. We have real life topics and grown folks discussion, um, you know, within that, uh, you know, discussion as well. When, real life topics. We'll be talking about, you know, uh, it, be it health news, uh, entertainment news, political news, um, uh, whatever, whatever's in the in the in the docket, whatever is in the news reports, whatever is in um, trending online in the news on TV or whatever. We're talking about it, and I got y'all with the uh, uh, inside scoop of the rating. In that segment, my girl Nina Taylor will be giving y'all the best in gospel news. Black history, um, sometimes world news, the music charts, whatever. It's a jam packed show today, so I don't want you all to miss it. It is time for the RH3 show. Keep it locked. Yes, as you heard the intro, we got our jam-packed show on today. We got an Inside Scoop with Red segment. That's where I give you my honest, my unscripted uh, opinion on today's world and entertainment news. We got a lot of things talking about in the news. I haven't done a full in-depth Real Talk with Red discussion. We're talking about, um, y'all, the North Carolina uh, uh, case with uh, Sandy and Casey Parsons. We're going to be speaking on, um, you know, Baltimore is in the news. Y'all Baltimoreans... Listen up. Um, Jay Z and you know, some things that he did. Tony Braxton is in the news again. All right, Kelly is in the news again. Angela Bassett. Um, what else? Who else are we going to be speaking on? Um, the shooting that happened on earlier this morning at another school, y'all. Man. Um, and I'll talk about that. Black Panther. Black Panther. Wakanda forever. I'm gonna talk about that and um um and how that broke and shattered and shocked records uh throughout the weekend. What else we gonna speak on? I think that's all that I have for you all. Oh 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 Ray Caruth. Ray Caruth. We're gonna be speaking on him and um yeah, so it's a lot of a lot of stuff we're gonna be talking about y'all on today. And I hope y'all have been doing well. Hope y'all have a great, 
great, great first part of the week um, I have. And, um, yeah, so we, gonna, we got a lot. Just sit back, relax, and relieve your mind. Coming up next is the Inside Scoop of Thread, and that's where I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on today's world in entertainment news. And then uh, after myself, Nina Taylor is going to come with this week in gospel news, and then we're going to get into the Real Talk with Red discussion where we are going to be talking about... Um, uh, our seventh point, seventh part of the biblical dating series, where we're going to be saying hi to I do within six to twelve months. So you don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss none of today's broadcast. Keep it where you got it. For more about me or the broadcast, visit my website at theirish3show.com. You're listening to a best of broadcast of the rh3 show for more about the broadcast please visit the rh3show.com Are you looking for an experienced and passionate video production company that values your time and resources? Then look no further. 1301 Productions specializes in creative promotional concepts that promote your product, brand, or service. Our main goal is that we can help you reach your existing clients as well as potential clients successfully. Call today to set up your free estimate. 1301 Productions, creative concepts for creative clients. For more information about 1301 Productions, give them a call at 424-835-1301. Coming up next is our girl, Nina Taylor, during the Inside Scoop of the Red segment right here on the RH3 Show. You're listening to a best of broadcast of the RH3 Show. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3Show.com. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Want the latest news regarding the TV, movies, sports, politics, and music industry? It is time for the Inside Scoop of the Red, right here on the RH3 Show. It is the inside scoop it red. And like the intro said, this is where I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on um, the intro didn't say that. I said that. Um, yeah, like I said in the beginning, I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on today's world and entertainment news. Um, like, oh, excuse me. Who, y'all? Oh, who is, I'm about to say, who's texting me? Anyway, um, y'all know I'm on the broadcast. Come on, could. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. It is the inside scoop is red again, like I said, where I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on real life top I mean, on today's world in entertainment news, uh, be it sports, politics, um, music industry, whatever. We we talking about it. Um uh, hey, let's go ahead and jump on it. R. Kelly, y'all. R. Kelly, R. Kelly. Again, disclaimer, those who don't, you know, listen to different type of genre of music. I have a vast variety of people who do, who listen to different areas of music or whatever. And I just don't want to mix and, you know, or just give one ground basis of an atmosphere or ground, ground basis of genre or whatever. And just trying to grow my, you know viewership and whatever and no i'm not you know watering down my beliefs or whatever for viewerships i'm not it's just i just want to be you know relatable for everybody you know everybody and that's what this show is it's for everybody it's for the the saved the unsaved the sick the unsick the uh uh those that can't get well and those that can get well the um the the um it's, it's for everybody it's for everybody and so um uh my printer y'all just went off right beside my desk so if you're trying to send a fax or whatever don't do it i ain't gonna give you the fax number yet but um yes um 
uh, it's for everybody. And so, you know, that's why I try to, you know, present materials for all my listeners and I give it you know of course beginning of the the broadcast every broadcast on my flagship station talks about um uh, the views and opinions expressed on the broadcast are you know not of you know everybody who's on you know W pop and so you know prayerfully you know every, every everybody it will you know get something out of my broadcast and that's why I you know discuss Real life topics, grown folks discussion, inside scoop of red news, entertainment, sports, whatever. So just listen on and grab hope to something that you, you know, you listen to and grab hope to something that, you know, you believe in. Okay? All right? Cool. All right, Kelly, y'all, is he was evicted from his house, but he got them before they got him, but he still was evicted. The house was abandoned. Um, uh, according to thegrio.com, R. Kelly evicted from the abandoned Georgia home. Uh, he allegedly owes for unpaid rent, damages to the house, and additional uh, late fees. But the Georgia home where R. Kelly allegedly kept several women in supposedly a cult has been uh, hit with eviction notice. The eviction was filed on Thursday. February the 13th um no it was found uh last week Tuesday February 13th for the home which is located in Johns Creek neighborhood in Duluth Georgia the eviction was reportedly found by the homeowners for unpaid rent and late fees according to Daily Mail sorry y'all had to yawn R. Kelly 51 was supposed to pay uh, eleven thousand five hundred and forty-two dollars and forty-five cent per month, but the Daily Mail reported that he has um, uh, twenty-three thousand eighty-four dollars and ninety cent in unpaid rent, and in uh two thousand and two thousand three hundred eight thousand forty-nine cent in late fees stacked up against him. That's just two months, almost two months. Yeah, almost two months, and um. Uh, even more, when the eviction notice was served, the home reportedly appeared to be abandoned. The owner is now reported looking to file criminal charges over uh, damages done to the property. After several break-ins last year, R. Kelly is waiting for his insurance payout, except uh, now the home's owner wants the money that um, Kelly might receive until things are resolved. And he isn't doing well, according to Daily Mail. You know that the spokesperson for R. Kelly blamed his most recent financial hard times on bad press. The singer uh, received because of the reported cult that he has been allegedly running. So that's neither here nor there. I'm not here to report about no cult or whatever. Just pay your monies and and you know do what's right, folks. What you know whether celebrities go through the same stuff that we go through. But our stuff is not out there, and and some of us are smart enough to not even put our, you know, put our business out there. But celebrities, they are, um, are celebrities, and, you know, hey, I I hope they can get their stuff together. I hope they can get their stuff together. But, um, in other news, uh... What else do we have? Angela Bassett, y'all. Stunning hair for Black Panther. Stunning hair for Black Panther. Took a month to create. I haven't seen it. Y'all haven't seen the movie. I haven't seen the movie. But Angela Bassett beautifully portrays the Queen uh, Ramonda in Black Panther. And for most of the images you've probably seen in the movie, she's wearing a gorgeous headdress. She's wearing a gorgeous headdress. But spoilers, at one point in the movie, Angela Bassett to take off the headdress and we get to see the gorgeous main silver locks. And so if you haven't seen it, go out and see it because it's been it's been sweeping the nation this weekend. Uh, 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 y'all, my people, has been going in, uh, in the Black Panthers four-day total, 404 million. 404 million worldwide and a slew of shattered records over the weekend. The superheroes film Domestically Jaw uh, Domestically Hall was jaw dropped 235 million miles ahead of original tracking numbers. 
early numbers indicated that Black Panther would make at least between 100 million and 120 million in its opening weekend. As the hype and the pre uh, sale ticket numbers grew, though the humble numbers got nudged higher and higher, all the way to 170 million. A few days before the film finally hit theaters. Now, after the complete four day weekend, the real numbers are here and they are even more astronomical and pro uh hoped that black panther has made 235 million domestically and 404 million worldwide shattering box records shattered it shattered it shattered it but um Black Panther has the second highest haul for a Sunday, according to Variety, uh, pulling in a cool 60 million for Sunday, and it is it sketched uh, its way into Marvel history by earning 2. I mean 25.2 million in 30 Thursday's night previews, making it the si- second highest preview grossing in the history. The film was narrowly beat out by Avengers: Age of Atron, Ultron, which earned 27.6 million. Black Panther is the second highest three-day domestic opening haul for a Marvel film overall edged out first Avengers film which made 207.4 million and as some Twitters point out Marvel latest um, has also easily outpaced one of the DC most recent release in just four days Black Panthers earned more than Justice League did during this domestic run which was about uh, 228.6 million y'all that was a mouthful and I can only imagine because you know it it just it just shattered things it just shattered things and um speaking of money Jay-Z drops one hundred thousand uh dollars on a lavish birthday party the lifetime of Sean Carter is all about big pimping and spending cheese as evidence uh, when Jay-Z dropped 110000 for a friend's birthday celebration in New York, y'all. And the award-winning rapper dropped a six-figure as fast as he dropped 16 bars for his homie Juan uh, OG Perez. And uh, Perez run uh, Jay-Z's Rock Nation Sports Empire. And the um, the party of five included Jay Perez and his cousin Emery Jones, Rock Nation CEO Jay Brown, and COO Desiree Perez, who is one, uh, Juan's wife. Y'all, everybody who um, are good friends of, friends of mine, if you know my birthday, um, April 7th, I'm not going to tell you the year, I wish y'all dropped drop some money on me all right drop some money on me please drop some money i'll give you i even give y'all my my um my uh cash app when it come when the birthday comes drop some money out on me <laughs> uh anyway probably that probably won't even happen because i can't even get nobody to host a birthday party for me but it is what it is i have to ask and yes i said it on radio and those who are my people who are listening sorry but it is what it is i mean i honestly y'all and i say this and i keep moving because i you know i ain't gonna raid on nobody parade this has been a great broadcast so far and i'm gonna keep it moving because you know hey but people will only do for you for for me anyway if i ask hey tony braxton announces engagement to birdman and shows off the huge ring and you know um you know it's been reported at two years of secretly dating that brought Braxton is engaged to Birdman and she flashes a human, a human, <laughs> a huge bling, diamond bling on promo of the upcoming season of Braxton Family Values. In the video, she t- teases that she has an announcement and says, I'm engaged. The engagement is no surprise. According to the closest uh, to the couple, um, they're so in love with each other. I'm surprised that they even waited for this long to do it. I think they're secretly married, but that's, you know, whatever. If y'all watch the Braxton's Family Values, y'all going to have to stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, another thing that we have to stay tuned to is uh, Ray Carruth when he get out in October. But he, um, hold on. Y'all, hold on one second because um, this ad is very disre- disrespectful. 
This ad is so disrespectful. This ad is so disrespectful. Sorry about that, y'all. So sorry about that if y'all heard that. But anyway, um, I was on an ESPN. ESPN, don't ever do that again. Don't you ever do that again. Um, but uh, Ray Carruth apologized for the death of pregnant girlfriend and seeks custody of the, his 18-year-old son, Chancellor. I'm going to take a break. Then I'm going to come back and give y'all more of this discussion. It is the RS3 show. I have y'all I have my opinion on this and some may not may like it, some may not. Keep it where you got it. I'll be right back. You're listening to The RS3 Show. You can visit my website at thers3show.com. If you're not tuning in to The RS3 Show Weekly, here's what you've missed. Number three, you think that she, she or he is too good to be true. Oh, this one is buying me flowers. I mean, what's really going on? Is he trying to hide something? No! Just because it's Tuesday, I'm giving you these flowers. Not just because it's Mother Day, just because today is Tuesday, April the 25th. I'm giving you these flowers on my way home because I thought about you. And the reason why I didn't answer my phone when you called, so you won't overthink it, is because I was at work and I was in a busy meeting. Knowing that you know that I do answer my phones periodically at work, but this time I was in a meeting. I could not answer my phone. Don't overthink everything and just think that it is a genuine reason that he's doing or she's doing such and such. Don't think that, you know, it's too good to be true. Come on, y'all. Join me every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. For more about The RH3 Show, visit my website at therh3show.com. Sorry about that, y'all. I am back. I uh, had to take a quick break. Um, we were in the middle of the Ray Carruth story. But um, according to ESPN.com, uh, the former Carolina Panther ride wide receiver Ray Carruth, who has spent the past 17 years in a North Carolina prison for conspiracy co- to commit murder, conspiracy, conspiracy to murder, uh, to murder his pregnant girlfriend, uh, opened up in the first time opened up for the first time in a handwritten letter to the victim's mother. Caruth wrote a 15-page letter to Sandra Adams, the mother of Sharika Adams, that was sent to a uh, to Charlotte's television station, WBTV News Channel 3. But he also spoke in a length by phone with the station about the letter accepting responsibility for the 1999 conspiracy to murder Sharika Adams expressing interest in gaining custody of their son and he says I'm apologizing for the loss of, of her daughter I'm apologizing for the impairment of my son Caruth told WBTV I feel responsible for everything that has happened and I just want her to know that I'm truly that truly I'm sorry for everything Caruth has scheduled, is scheduled to be released from the Samson Correctional Institute in Clinton, North Carolina on October the 22nd. He was sentenced to 18 to 24 years in prison in the 2001 after being found guilty of hiring Van Brett Watkins and Michael Kennedy to murder Adams. Watkins, who shot Adams multiple times, was sentenced to a minimum of 40 years. Kennedy, who drove the car, was released in 2011. Adams died a month after the shooting. Her son, Chancellor Lee Adams, was born prematurely and has and has battled the challenges that comes from cerebral palsy, which is the result of his traumatic birth after the shooting. And Sandra has raised Chancellor, who's now 18. The past uh, in the past interview with Charlotte Observer, she has expressed that she would like to be present 
happened the day Caruth is released. And so, you know, he goes on to say that he wants to, you know, I'll read this last part. I should be raising my son. His mother should be raising, um, his mother should be raising her son. Caruth said, Miss Adams should not be doing this. And I want to that re- responsibility back. <sighs> do I agree with him or do I, do I, am I not agreeing with him? I, I, uh, you know what? Um, I agree with him. I agree with him. But there is a but. There is a but that follow along. Hot to my all oh, this. You know what, y'all? This really is is is. Anyway, let me keep on moving. Um, <laughs> uh, I agree with him. I totally, totally, totally agree with him. Should nobody shouldn't be raising his son. Her mother shouldn't be raising his son. Sharika should be raising her son. But who's not here? Sharika isn't here. And you know, Sharika is is, you know, heaven forbid she's 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 gone. She's gone. And Ray, um, you took that from her. You and the other guys, including the driver, took that from her. And so should you have um, the opportunity to raise your son? Should you have the opportunity to raise your son? My now that I will say no, no, Mm-mm. nope. Why? Why you say no, Red? Why no? Because it was his intentions to, like he said. And I'll go back to the article, and and these mainly are his words. If I hope I didn't close this out, and I think that I did. Let's see if I can pull this back up. But um, y'all, it was his intentions to, you know, get rid of her because of the abortion. I mean, you know, uh, you didn't initially want him, but of course he lived, and his mo- her mother been 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 you know raising the be- the boy and now you want his you now you want to for him to live with you living with you uh no no and that's my opinion living with you nope 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 in o no being in his life i'm all for it and i hope miss adams is all for it can he come live with you nope but it's best for you to be in his life and let everything grow because he, the child does not even know you. He doesn't know you. He doesn't know you. And so I brought this um, this this uh, uh, article back up to finish re um, finish reading the quotes. But he says, "I feel like he might not ever have his mother in his life, but he he could still have me, and I could still make a difference. And I don't think that's anyone's responsibility when I'm still here." And um, you know, um, Caruth refers, according to the ESPN.com, Caruth refers to several lies he claimed Adams made, beginning with saying he never apologized, as well as. Um, of Adams creating a false impression of his relationship with her daughter. He said, outside of a physical relationship, me and your daughter were practically strangers. He also challenged that his motives for having Sharika Adams killed was to avoid pay- to paying child support. Noting that child support was never mentioned as a motive during the trial, he said the motive was more to do with Sharika being unwilling to get an abortion. Unwilling to get an abortion, meaning that you wanted her to get an abortion and you didn't want the child, but now you want him and now you want to be responsible for raising him no you cannot have custody of him if that would be me and if that was and if i was part of you know the adams family or if i was uh if i was um uh a judge or a lawyer no 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 would i give you rights to visit him and rights to to uh, be in his life yes I will but primary custody will stay with the child's grandmother and I'm done with that police finds a uh, distractionary type devices in a backpack of a 7th grader who shot self at Jackson school 
um, Jackson Township, Ohio. Here's the latest on the Tuesday incident. Um, the, the, the distractionary type device. Police said at a news conference Tuesday afternoon that investigators found a distractionary type devices in the backpack of a boy who shot himself inside Jackson Memorial Middle School. Police said the devices were not explosive and they did not find any devices that would have done harm to others. Authorities def- define distractionary type device as something that would grab a person's attention by creating smoke or loud noise. Authorities said that they still don't know the boy's intentions were. Authorities said the boy suffered a self-inflicted gun wound inside the boy's bathroom. It is unclear at the time if the shooting was accidental or intentional. The weapon was described as a long gun by officials. It's not clear how the student brought the firearm inside. The seventh grader was taken to a local hospital where his condition is unknown and Jackson Township Middle School and high school students were dismissed uh, the uh, for the day around 7 50 a.m following message was posted on the website and it you know it's just talk you know um speaks of the of the um you know what i mentioned about the 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 wound i mean in in, in the shooting and so um that was this morning and so i'm going to see if i can give you all an update on it because we got to keep on moving for uh today's topic real life discussion topic um you know the biblical dating series so but um yeah uh <laughs> it's crazy y'all even even what's going on in florida um uh let's see here i don't think they have any updates on the uh student um who who shot himself and so what i'll do is on thursday i'll give you a brief update on this and then we can you know keep it moving um rowan county uh grand jury indict sandy and casey parsons on murder charges and um you know they are uh you know what uh salisbury post play too much because no i'm gonna go to wbtv uh three news report really quick and um it says that they uh let's see here uh let's see let's see let's see um what is the results of this because it it is it is fairly long it is fairly long and so um how about we we talk about this on thursday as well because i gotta keep moving uh here's nina taylor with this week in gospel news oh baltimore america's deadliest city y'all need to let me keep my mouth shut but you know (laughs) baltimore baltimore is a bit is is a bit bit messy and dangerous so y'all be careful baltimoreans please slow down please slow down here's our girl nina taylor with this week in gospel news and i'll coming up next um i'll be uh talking uh, about the real talk with red discussion uh uh from high to i do within uh six months to a year be back in a minute You're listening to a best of broadcast of the RH3 show. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3show.com. How you doing, everybody? I'm Nina Taylor with this week's Gospel News. Jason Champion, gospel singer and one-time member of the R&B group Minute Large. A native of Cleveland, Ohio, he formed Minute Large with David Tolliver in 1992 while they were both still teens. Behind R&B hits like So Alone and Let's Talk About It, they hit the Billboard 200 with their self-titled debut album with 1994's One Size Fits saw both references to the singer's stout physiques. They released two more albums in 1999 and in 2007 before Champion left the group to pursue a career in gospel music. He soon signed with EMI CMG, which released the long player Reflections in the spring of 2008. The solo debut landed on the Billboard Top Gospel Albums chart that summer, and the single Always reached number two on the Gospel Songs charts later in the year. In 2009, Reflections was among the Grammy nominees for Best Contemporary R&B Gospel Album. After changes at the label, which delayed his follow-up album, Champion signed with Warren Campbell's My Block Records in 
14 with plans for new material. Jason currently has a song rising up the gospel music charts. Black History Month honors the contributions of African Americans to U.S. history. Black History Month is the celebration of black history. The celebration of Black History Month began as Negro History Week, which was created by Carter G. Woodson in 1926. He was an African American historian, scholar, educator, and publisher. It became a month long celebration in 1976. The month of February was chosen to coincide with the birthdays of Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. This week in our Black History Moment, we salute some of the great women of our history. Shirley Chisholm was the first African American woman elected to the House of Representatives. She was elected in 1968 and represented the state of New York. Self-made millionaire Madam C.J. Walker, born on a cotton plantation in Louisiana, became wealthy after inventing a line of African-American hair care products. She established Madam C.J. Walker Laboratories and was also known for her philanthropy. Oscar winner in 1940, Hattie McDaniel was the first African-American performer to win an Academy Award, the film industry's highest honor. She won for her portrayal of the loyal slave and gone with the wind. In 1992, Dr. Mae Jemison became the first African-American woman to go into space aboard the space shuttle Endeavor. During her eight-day mission, she worked with U.S. and Japanese researchers and was a co-investigator on a bone cell experiment. Let's continue on with our 2018 Stellar Gospel Music Award nominees. We left off at Category 17. Traditional CD of the Year, I Got Out by Brian Poppin. Let Them Fall in Love by C.C. Winans. Close by Marvin Sapp. And 10 by Ricky Dillard and New G. Urban Inspirational Single or Performance of the Year. Trust in You, Anthony Brown and Group Therapy. You Deserve It, J.J. Harrison and Youthful Praise. I'm Getting Ready, Tasha Cobbs Leonard. And You Waited by Travis Green. Music Video of the Year. Brian Purnell for You. The Dolly Express, Jermaine Dolly. Derek Blanks, We Livin', It's Still Personal. Tina Campbell, Terrence Crawley, I've Seen Him Work. Sunday Song, Anita Wilson. Terrence Crawley and Ted Wynn for Grateful. Stand in Awe by Ted Wynn. Category 20, Traditional Choir of the Year. Bishop Paul S. Morton, Legacy, Live in New Orleans. Charles Butler and Trinity, The Blood Experience. Ricky Dillard and New G, 10. And Fellowship Choir, We Win. Here's your Billboard Top 10 Songs in the Country. Number 10, J.J. Harrison and Youthful Praise for No Reason to Fear. Number 9, Ted Wynn, Stand in Awe. Number 8, Charles Jenkins featuring Leandria with Grace. Number 7, William Murphy, Everlasting God. Number 6, Marvin Sapp with Close. Number 5, Anthony Brown and Group Therapy, Trust in You. Number 4, Travis Green, You Waited. Number 3, Todd Delaney, Your Great Name. Number 2, Corin Hawthorne, Won't He Do It. And number one for three weeks, Ja'Kalen Carr with You Will Win. Well, that's your Billboard Top 10 songs this week, your list of stellar nominees, your Black History Moment, and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. What I just told you, that's how I felt. That's how I felt. If I wanted to say that, I would have wrote it. I said said what I said. You don't like it, it, you don't like it. It's the Real Talk with Red segment right here on the Arch 3 Show. All right, you all, it is the Real Talk with Red discussion, and this is where I give you my honest, my unscripted opinion on real-life topics, grown folks discuss eons and like i said we've been talking about this for the past few weeks and we are on the uh part six of the biblical dating series and and not part six part seven part six we talked about growing in intimacy and i got heartburn and today for part seven it is from high to i do within six months to a year but in a matter of dating or courtship y'all Generally, um, you know, I generally recommend that people either get, you know, married or, you know, break up or decide what you're going to do within six months to a year of of, or so of being a dating relationship. I also believe that that this recommendation applies to equal force, you know, to single men and women in college, of course, you know. 
focus on your college work, but also, you know, date, you know, whatever, have fun. But one of our bedrock governing principles in the biblical dating and in how we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ generally is not to defraud our single brothers and sisters by implying a greater greater relationship of commitment between us and them at them that actually exist i discuss this principle um you know more fully or i discuss it um um you know every so often but you know I've talked about it during the principles of, of, of drawing boundaries during this series. And also, you know, within the next week or so, I'm going to be talking about what does a biblical relationship look like since we're talking about biblical dating. So I'll do that on next Tuesday. And then next Thursday, I got something to, to jump down my, my brother's throat. I got I to, gotta, I gotta, you know, talk to my fellas for a bit. I got to talk to my fellas for a bit. All right. And we're going to do that. But as a quick reference, uh, we can defraud our brothers and sisters again, like I said, uh, in a dating context by showing or encouraging a level of intimacy either emotionally or physically but that the bible seems to reserve for marriage and for marriage only and and we can act like we're married before we've made the commitment that's defrauding and basically sinning you know if we act like we're married doing married things screwing like rabbits before we get married we can't do that and and we're sinning and 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 defrauding those are believers and even you know i i don't want to sound judgmental and i'm not judgmental but you know those who are you know trying to live right uh let me say that and you know hey but emotional temptations is, is is attached to it. I don't know whether you've noticed this, but people involving in a you know dating relationship tend to get to know each other better over the course of that relationship. But in fact, y'all, they are usually really authentic, uh, or, um, uh, uh, enthusiastic. I'm just thinking out loud, enthusiastic about doing so. But y'all, we might um, even say that getting to know one another better and more deeply is which is up to a certain you know limited point of course but is that very purpose of the dating relationship when two people are dating when two people are dating especially when it's going well and to, and the two are really into one another the desire to spend more and more time together to know each other better and better you know, I mean, they ha- they have that even more desire deeply, but um, you know, and and also to confide in each other, and more and more often, you know, exclusively is overwhelming. But as your general comfort level around each other rises, the momentum grows even more. Now, picture this: picture this for example, college life. Like I said in the beginning, college life. We'll assume that one per clear principle from Scripture that both members of our college couples are Christians. Let's just say that. Let's just say that on most college campuses, that likely puts the two of you in the same relatively small circle. Of course, per, uh, perhaps both of you are active in the same campus ministry go to the same church over time maybe you take some of those same classes and also live in each other etc in that context living with the desires that i've just described how likely do y'all think that it is that over a course of two to three to four years some couples date over most of their college years you will be able to maintain enough emotional discipline and distance to avoid emotionally and relationally you know quote unquote married or whatever but there are numerous of y'all numerous of long dating couples in college and beyond who other than are living together could do little to intertwine their lives more than they already have and they already are but they see each other every day and are with others family every holiday and often you know they know their partner's family as well as any sons or you know rather daughter-in-law does you know but they travel together to spend more time, you know, non-working or studying together. They daily confide in one another. And also, again, like I said, they go to these campuses and online campuses and classes and small groups or whatever. And maybe, you know, 
And without all the doubt, you know, they're closer or emotional with each other other than, you know, anyone else sees on, you know, this planet. They are close to each other. This is exactly the level of intimacy that is reserved for marriage. Only in the dating couples should make every effort to restrain until the appropriate time. And when is that? Marriage. Can uh, this level of emotional in- intimacy happen between the people who have been dating for a short amount of time? Of course. Of course. And I, you know, I'm a prime example. And so, y'all... Um, <laughs> I'm a prime example of that, and and of course, you know, it it, it can happen. But y'all, let's talk about physical temptation for a moment. Let's talk about physical temptation. The scripture calls for Christians to flee from sexual immorality. You can check First Corinthians six and eighteen about that. But um um, but not to see how difficult we can make temptation and still prevail. Or to see how close the line we can get without sinning. In my view, the scripture teaches that it's clearly no romantic physical intimacy outside of marriage. No reasonable person should argue that physical temptation not does not increase a lot. But the longer the two people date are, um, you know, who are attracted to each other or who grows to love each other. But sadly, statistics and anecdotal experience both indicate that even the vast majority of Christian couples who spend time in dating relationships of any length sin physically. And I told you before throughout this series of what a Christian woman had I didn't say woman then, but I just said the person. And that we yes I did say woman because I had you know, I had to uh you know test out uh um uh such and such whenever I was going with him because I didn't wanna, you know, live with nobody that I couldn't you know, couldn't please me sexually. The longer the relationship, the higher the percentage. Where a relationship is shorter, accountability stronger, and the level of emotional intimacy more responsible, the level of physical temptation and the likelihood of sin goes down. The bottom line, to put to, to put it simply, not acting married before you are married gets exponentially more difficult the longer a premarital relationship persists. And that's why I said from 6 to 12, know what you're doing. At least my time and I always, and I've I've spoken on this and I said I will give you all my timeline or dating timeline of you know whatever. Say you meet somebody in January. Y'all start talking. A week go by, go on a date. Another week go by, go on a second date. Okay, what are we doing here? By the second, I really like you third date or whatever I know before the third date or even after during the second I really like you or whatever I want to start dating okay February come March come I want to start courting you April come May June you courting and you are seriously courting June I, I, I don't I don't want to be with nobody else but her don't want to be with nobody else but her during that time from june and so preferably uh i would give it september october you should know whether if you want to be with this person for the rest of your life or not and that's it that is it but y'all Certainly, as God's people, we don't want to live in fear and have our lives be primarily defined by avoiding temptation rather than positively seeking after Christ. And I'm not suggesting, you know, that we do, but still, where particularly known areas of temptation exist, it is not living in fear to be deliberate about taking, um, about, you know, taking the wiser course y'all but you know popular responses on this topic let, let's try let me try to deal very briefly with the most popular responses that i get you know that we all get during this argument you know especially from college students and i was going to take a break y'all but i have to uh keep on uh moving and discuss um you know 
discuss uh finish discussing this this topic but um you know question number one you know let's say you know we're talking about you know high to um i do in 12 to you know 6 to 12 months this argument doesn't really apply to us because we're in a long distance relationship well i think it does but even the physical circumstances are different as to emotional intimacy we live in the age of email free long distance unlimited anytime minutes cheap flights skype whatever it is still it really easily to act married emotionally even in a long distance relationship and i y'all i'm the one and i'm the type to not walk around and claim my girlfriend as wifey and she's not my wifey oh that's wifey right there that's wifey that's wifey if she's wifey make her wifey quit playing with folks <sighs> we dated less than a year and we got then got engaged we'll be engaged for the next 18 months while we finish school but we're already committed so that's cool uh no if you've forgotten the cardinal rule of relationship reread the tips for engagement um you know post on balance.org engagement is a great thing but it's not marriage it may as you know be practical matter necessity addressing issues and you know being in a bit more intimate than you know they were before but the simple fact is that couples break up even after engagement don't y'all know that three we're so much more fruitful in ministry as a couple we feel led to be together god's calling us to date throughout college come on Come on, quit playing with God. We have no choice. We have to wait. My parents will not pay for school if we get married before graduation. Um, but you are actually have two biblically responsible choices. They're both hard. I admit that um, they're both doable. One choice is to get married anyway and work your way through. Many people work their way through it. Um, you know, it'll... It, It'll take longer, sure. Of course, it's to stay in school and put the relationship on hold. And, you know, of course. And that that is my second. I would do that. You know, put the relationship on hold. I wouldn't put it on hold so much long. But I'm saying, no, I'm not going to get married through college. No, I'm going to just wait. And there's, you know, even more, you know, questions, you know, about, you know, people I trust, um, and, you know, think you should date at least a year or two before marrying. I can't get enough information about the other person over a course of a short period of relationship. I'm really worried, you know, and I, I'll end up settling. No, you won't. If you really love that person, you're going to still stick and be with them. Still stick and be with them. I'm going to close out this broadcast coming up next. It is the RST Show. I'll be back in a moment. Keep it where you got it. All right? Peace. You're listening to a best of broadcast of the RH3 Show. For more about the broadcast, please visit the RH3Show.com. This is Marnicha from the Marnicha Show with Parenting Points. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. In the U.S., over 700,000 children are removed from their homes annually and placed in foster care. Over 600,000 youth experience admission to detention facilities and on any given day, almost 300,000 kids are incarcerated. Did you know that over 10 million children in America already have one or more incarcerated parents? Parents, it is predicted that 70% of these children will end up in jail. In order to change these stats, we have to change our parenting. Children are a priority, not an afterthought. You are their parent, but they are God's possession. Put your children above yourself. Know that just as much as they need basic food, shelter, and clothing, they need you. You are the key to a great future for your kids. For more parenting, tune in every week to the Marnita Show right here on your favorite radio station. K&B Improvement. No job too big or too small. Heaven knows we do it all. From carpet cleaning to house turnover, deep scrubbing and more. Carpet restoration, we give you what you ask for. Reliable, reasonable, prices you can't beat. Let us serve you in all your cleaning needs. For we are dependable and neat. Call 301 379 Five nine three nine Kevin Best, www.k 
and B improvement dot com. This is Marnita from the Marnita show. Are you listening to my show on Tuesday at noon or Saturday at one thirty? You should. It airs right here on WPOP radio. Your number one inspirational source for heart and soul music. It don't get no better than that. Y'all, we got out of here. Great time. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. Join me on Thursday as I conclude this biblical dating series. And we're going to also give you another inside scoop of the red news. And preferably on next Tuesday, I might do a full hour of Ask Red Letters. I, how about that? I might do that for you all because we've been talking a lot. And I haven't written any, read any letters. So if you want to send me a, an anonymous letter, please do so and email me at ASKRH the number three at gmail.com for more about me or the broadcast visit my website at the rh3 show.com know that i love you for real and always remember to live every day laugh every moment and love and remember to live every day laugh every moment and love beyond words i'll talk to y'all soon and see you on thursday peace party people ha ha see you later peace That that's from sin to the saint As winners we can't live by the pictures they paint Because they know that all the inner retain So we must live out our lives with a sense of restraint Which means do I live and we ain't But you're controlled by the flesh We're depicted as quaint And pray without a quitter's complaint And being able to turn down your dinner at eight Because the price that he paid for me Gave to me my freedom So I'm not a slave for me Christ made a way for me Grace we didn't pay for me Your way back to God through the life that he gave for me and make me gay with a switch Our lives were in darkness They came with a switch So we don't walk like we used to Talk like we used to Call us with honor And he'll do it for you too Yeah And we're gonna praise him now Praise the bloody cause to switch Go ahead Cause I know I gotta give it up If anybody wanna come And praise the Lord Go ahead Cause I know I gotta give it up Praise the bloody cause to switch I know I gotta praise him now Praise the Cause I know I gotta give it up If anybody wanna come and praise the Lord I know I gotta praise because he set me free Christ said he paid free me at Calvary I'm gonna dance and there's no stopping me Don't have a chance cause I got victory This has been an encore presentation, a best of broadcast of Arts 3 Productions. For more about me or the broadcast, you can visit my website at thearts3show.com.